Welcome back, Time Crunched fans. This is the Time Crunch Cyclist Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Adam Pulford. And today is another Q&A episode where I answer questions directly from you, our listeners. We've had a ton of great questions pouring in, way more than I anticipated. So it looks like I'll be doing even more of the shows like this in the near future. So how it works is if you have any question related to training, nutrition, racing, physiology, sports psychology, really anything in the endurance athlete realm of things, submit it to us and we'll answer it here on the podcast. Simply go to trainright.com backslash podcast and click on ask a training question. Those questions get sent directly to me and I answer them on the show a lot like we're going to be doing right here, right now. So, um, first question for the day is when you ride in extreme temperatures, cold or hot, should the TSS be modified to reflect the stress of the ride? It seems like on cold rides these days, I'm always more tired than usual. And that is coming from Brian. Brian, great, great question. And it's, you know, the short answer is no, don't change the TSS score or the training stress score on cold days. The, the reason kind of like the long answer to this is we want to keep training stress separate from general stress when we're trying to quantify uh, training stimulus, or we're trying to quantify where fatigue is coming from. So TSS is, is one of the best ways that we can do this from an aerobic exercise standpoint. Uh, I'll remind everybody that uh, TSS scores based on your FTP and, and how long you, you ride, you know, below or above it. By definition, 60 minutes at your FTP equals 100 TSS points. And, and that can be kind of the fulcrum or, or the pivot point that you think about what a TSS score is for, um, for every ride that you do. Okay. The longer you go, the less intense it is, but you can rack up training stress and the shorter you can go harder and rack up training stress. Okay. But that's coming from the aerobic and anaerobic contributions of the ride. So physiological stress. Now, when it comes to extreme cold or heat, or stressful conditions like, uh, I don't know, riding in congested traffic, for example, slippery roads, uh, technical mountain bike terrain, uh, crit racing, you know, if it's, if it's stressful to you, all of this are, it's other stressors that can make, you know, the, the ride itself more challenging, but both physically and, and, and mentally, right? So the, um, you know, technical single track can really beat you up. Um, and crit racing, if you're not used to it, that can be like, you know, kind of psychologically stressful because you're always worried about crashing something like that. So, but it doesn't mean that it has, you know, that stress doesn't have direct impact on the aerobic or anaerobic system. Okay. And so it's the same thing with, with cold, it'll make you tired, but it's not going to add benefit necessarily to your aerobic or anaerobic systems. Now, the one exception there is, is heat. There, there's, um, you know, if we had a Venn diagram with, uh, aerobic, anaerobic and, and heat training, uh, there, there would be a little overlap, um, with that Venn diagram in the way of plasma volume expansion. And so, you know, could you tick up the TSS score on a very hot ride? Sure. But I think that, well, maybe not sure. I mean, you can argue a lot of things. I don't do that, uh, because I want to stay consistent over time. So if I've got a huge TSS ride, I want to know that that came from, uh, you know, the, the power or the heart rate generated from the athlete, not just because somebody arbitrarily, um, no matter how good you are at kind of identifying yourself or your stresses within yourself, I don't want somebody to plug that in, in an artificial way. So, um, you know, all the more reason to talk to your athlete or kind of, you know, um, check in with yourself and know that it was a bigger stress than what it may be reflected there. And we'll talk about some implications here in a second, but I don't change TSS for it. Now, something like, uh, technical mountain bike terrain or, 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 you know, some, you know, chonky gravel races, that kind of stuff. Uh, you can feel the impact of that. Like you just feel 
completely kind of gutted after like a six hour mountain bike race or a 10 hour gravel race or really chonky stuff like the unbound gravel or something like that. Um, now when you feel that, when you're like, man, that did not feel like 253, you know, 250 TSS, it felt like 450. Okay. One little trick that you can do is to check to see if the aerobic, um, stress is, is, is showing on your file. And one thing that people kind of don't know about this, but like once you uploaded a file into training peaks, you can toggle the TSS to pull from power or heart rate. And so what you can do, and I, I do this actually in some technical mountain bike training files is I will go to the little drop down arrow and then you upload the file, click on it. And this is on the laptop version, right? Um, click on the HRTSS and it may reflect higher than the, than the TSS pulling from power. Okay. And so I would, I would personally go with whatever the higher TSS score is on the day. And that's a pretty decent way of quantifying, like say a harder day than, than normal. Um, and, and the reason why the heart rate might be higher than the power itself is because something like technical mountain bike terrain or gravel, that's really, you know, beating you up and, and you're, you're soaking in the impact from, um, the rocks, roots and other things is, uh, your aerobic system is still going technical mountain bike terrain where you're having to negotiate with both upper body, um, lower body and making some very big power moves that aren't reflected in a, in a pedal stroke. That's where the aerobic stress can be seen a little bit better or the training stress can perhaps be seen a little bit better, um, in the heart rate monitor. Now it's still not perfect, but it may reflect it a little bit more Brian to your, your question. Okay. So if you're using a heart rate monitor, um, as well as a power meter, you, you can kind of toggle back and forth and see a little bit more there. Now, the other interesting one is with my athletes, I do it in a little different way. Have you ever heard of LSS? Probably not. Cause I, I just made it up. Okay. But I, I kind of joke with my athletes about LSS or life stress score. Okay. Now you can, <laughs> And I asked my athletes, just like high, medium, low, where's your life stress right now? Okay. There's no absolute numbers. There's no, you know, algorithm that quantifies it for you out there or anything like that. But it's a, it is a, uh, you know, kind of qualitative metric that I use in communication with my athletes to see how stressful life is on a day so that I, or on a week or whatever. So I know how that's impacting their training. Because if they're not able to do, say, normal training that they were maybe doing last week or we've done in a different block before, and I'm like, hey, what's going on? And, you know, work is, you know, ramped up. Um, you know, the, the kids are doing everything, all the sports, and, and they're not sleeping and all this kind of stuff. Life stress is high. And therefore, the performance generally comes down. And so when that occurs, like I'm not... I'm not going to increase TSS, uh, on a day that's super stressful at work, because again, it goes back to, it's not going to benefit your aerobic or anaerobic, uh, systems. Right. But we know it was a huge, uh, stressful day for you. Okay. And you, when you check in on your LSS score, maybe you can start to, uh, get a little bit more insight on what's going on within your, yourself so that you can make better decisions about your training. So the main implications are when you have some of these bigger stressful days, whether it's coming from the cold, the heat, the terrain or life. Okay. Give yourself some grace, pad a little bit more recovery on the backside of things. Or so meaning like if you had a, a really technical mountain bike training day, you know, maybe go easier the next day instead of doing the intervals. Another example is if you had a huge day at the office, huge day at work, or, you know, a big weekend with the kids running around all the different sports rather than charge into Monday and do intervals, give yourself a day, give yourself a day or two, right? Get some sleep, get, get under control before you start to induce higher training stresses from a training session. Additionally, another implication from that is, uh, you know, re record 
a lot of this stuff as, as best you can that have increased stressors. So you can make comments on training peaks. You can do mood ranking on training peaks, RPE for a given session, or, you know, rank your LSS. Okay. And so you're, you're, what I'm talking about here is creating a good journal or recording good information about how you're responding to training, how you're responding to life. And that's going to help you, you know, reflect and learn about what works, what doesn't, and maybe what happened during a, you know, a time period where it was low training and you say, Oh, I wasn't training much that, that time. What happened? Well, you can go back. And if you have some of these, um, some of these good recorded things, you can, you can identify problems a little bit more. Okay. Okay. So moving on number two, when I go on a long ride and after about one hour and 30 minutes, I take my first energy drink and I can ride harder than at the beginning of the ride. Does anyone know why? Thank you for your help. Christian. Okay. Christian. So, uh, short answer is sugar and caffeine. I'll just say they, they work well to increase energy and focus in the short term. And that's why you're feeling better at 90 minutes in versus, uh, before. So that's the short and sweet. Okay. The detailed answer is all right. First, you know, from an energy drink standpoint, like if you are slamming some Red Bulls or monsters, uh, which, Hey, I do, uh, stop at a gas station, get a Red Bull and some water and a, a Snickers bar and away you go. Right. Uh, good, good fuel. But you could also be sport drink here, Christian. I, I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but either way, we're talking about, uh, you know, sugar and calories going in after about this like 90 minute mark. Okay. Now let's just assume a couple things is if you're doing a faster ride or, or let's just say like, um, you know, we talked about that on the nutrition, uh, Q and a that we did before this probably don't need to do faster rides, but if you're starting empty or if you're starting with like, a a ride where you haven't taken in much after about 90 minutes, I mean, you're depleting glycogen stores and hydration levels quite a bit. Uh, for most people after 90 minutes, maybe, you know, you could be losing anywhere between 700 and 1200 kilojoules, um, done at that point. Okay. You could do that amount of work and deplete at that level, right? Your body wants and needs fuel to keep exercising. And so when you give it that fuel, you'll be feeling great. Okay. Now, if you, if you start on an empty tank, like I talked about before, um, that's, that's not the greatest, like way to start a training ride, especially if you have some of those performance goals. Okay. So if you, if you're starting more empty, right, you had a big work day or you just got to get it in the morning, you want to start fueling earlier and often. Okay. So if you're doing early morning training sessions before work, you wake up, you get going, have some sport drink and water. If you have performance goals in mind, you're doing two hour training session or 90 minutes with uh, intensity. And that's going to be the, the thumbs up way to go. Um, if it is just 60 or 90 minutes and it's just like zone two endurance work, you don't need to do that, but having a little bit of fuel on hand, just in case you do feel a little wonky or bonky is, is definitely good because a well-fueled athlete is going to be a well, uh, trained athlete is going to be a, a very, uh, fit athlete. So more fuel, the better, especially when we're working with performance goals. So what you could be, what you're doing, you know, if, if you do start empty and you don't consume anything until 90 minutes, we talked about this on the previous nutrition Q and a that, that could work if it's a strategy, but I tend to find that I just get better results out of my athletes if we're eating and drinking early and often. So, uh, maybe just for Christian, maybe you just start, uh, taking in a little bit sooner. So you feel better and pedal more power, which will give you better training results. Okay. So in summary, when we're training in extreme environments, we still want to separate training stress from general stress. Keeping the TSS system intact or the measurement the same way day to day and year to year will help keep your data clean and help you understand how your aerobic and anaerobic system is reacting to the training stress itself. 
Okay. Now, if it gets more complicated than that with, with heat and cold, I do suggest you put in, you know, comments on training peaks, RPE ranking, um, and, and know why there's like a bigger stress going on than it is. And the, the main implication is if you have a huge day of, of cold riding, just make sure you're really good to yourself that next day and get some extra recovery before you charge on to the next hard session. And then finally with fueling, fuel early, fuel often for performance. It's, you know, it's fine to not consume stuff right away in that first hour, just like I talked about. But if you do have those performance goals in mind, um, put the fuel in, let the, let the fire burn hot. So that's all for today. I will link to a few research articles that I use to uh, help answer these questions on the train, um, trainright.com backslash podcast uh, website. And there you can find more of our podcasts as well as some more information. And again, that's where you can ask any training question that you want. So thank you again for listening. That's all for now.